foreign policy of Nigeria under the different administration. That's what we're looking at. And if you look, if you can see from what I project here now, see that our coverage is from 1960 to 2007. Do that, we are not going to achieve everything today. Let me see how far I can go with this. Um, please, so you may not get questions in this arena in the theory. Sincerely speaking, if you pick your UTMA pass question in this area, as we forge ahead, you will see different questions. So I want you to pay attention, especially with special attributes or special objectives attached to a particular administration. That is what I'm going to look at here. The key points, the key point of the foreign policy drive of the specific administration. What are some things that were done one way or the other? Because these are the areas you are going to come across question. As we forge ahead, I'm going to elaborate that. Uh, and I believe that there's nobody here that is having any jewelers regarding their foreign policy. So question I set, the assignment I give to you, for the fact that I give insight on what I expected from you, some of you still crash. Hmm? Except few that have that secure small, small marks. I expect at times that you ask question, but you don't ask question. And uh, the, I think the problem is, is benchmark on the fact that you, you don't study ahead. It's when you have a topic, it's always good to study ahead of your teacher. So you have the privilege to ask questions in different arena. I remember I taught you nationalism. And I taught you then the factor that uh, influenced uh, the growth of nationalism in uh, either Nigeria or West Africa. And under the factor, I divided them into two. I said there were some of these factors were internal, while some were what? External. And I made it known to you then that if you are asked a question to maybe to discuss or highlight external factor that influenced Nigeria for um, uh, national, the growth of nationalism in Nigeria, you are not, you are not expected to deal with internal factors, you district it with external factors. And if the question is general, then you can pick from either internal or external. The same question I asked you under the foreign policy stand, actually want to like get the kind of understanding you have as regards the topic. Since you don't ask question, let me give it to you. And, you, and I quoted the year that I asked the question. So as we have internal factor that influence uh, Nigeria foreign policy, so, so we have um, external factors. Prudent. I think we have to check out that now. Or, and if you come across the question next time, we will to do justice to it. You can unmute yourself and unmute yourself and talk. Unmute yourself and talk. So I've not seen government. I okay. Don't worry. Maybe after the class. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Better still. I will run through this class. Then I will project it for you here. Hmm? So that you okay. see the way it work. All right. So please remind me in case I want to forget. All right. Back to today's business. We'll be looking at for those new comments. I said we are looking at historical, as in different objective, different uh, policies put in place, or what drive the different administration policy, uh, foreign policy in Nigeria. And we are starting with Balewa of 1960. Don't forget, Tawa uh, Balewa was the Prime Minister of Nigeria between October 1, 1960 to January 15, 1966, when we had the first military coup in Nigeria, and in which the coup consume the gentleman called Tafawa Balewa due to certain things. I think I have told some of you here who have participated in my class. Then. This is Tafawa Balewa. The, the first and the only prime minister in Nigeria. 
because they may ask you, you know, any objective question. I want to be the first and only prime minister. And of course, you have been taught a uh, parliamentary system of government in SS1. And you know that in a parliamentary system of government, the activities of government is in the hands of uh, the prime minister, Why the president or the queen or the king, or as case may be, carry out a ceremonial function. Now, Nigeria independent in 1960. As a result of the independence of Nigeria in 1960, we, every country, just as I've said, must relate with, we have to relate with other countries in the world. And the relationship will have to be benchmarked on certain things. Okay. Are you any problem? Okay, if you are having, if I, I, I think I took the right time, don't be exposing yourself too much to other laptop or phone. It's always advisable to use last, okay? In most cases to prevent the risk of light coming from the other laptop or the phone, okay? Now, as, an, as a new independent nation, Safar Balewa also embarked on uh, his own foreign policy. But the foreign policy of Safar Balewa could be seen to be a kind of a, a shall I call it an imbalance or a, a kind of a lack of a straight or straightforward foreign policy. When I said imbalance or a foreign policy that was not straightforward, I'm referring to the fact that there are so many things that were adopted under this foreign policy of which this, some of these objectives were abandoned. But quickly, let me quickly tell you that don't forget Britain colonized Nigeria. And during the, after the Second World War, the whole world was divided into two. We have the Western Bloc and the Eastern Bloc. Britain belonged to the Western Bloc. That's the block driven by capitalism. While the Asian countries and some countries in Europe belong to the Eastern Bloc driven by socialism. Then some countries in the world, including Nigeria, decided that they will not be part of any of these blocs in order not to cause Second World War. You'll be taught in SS3, no align movements. So Nigeria is a member of no align movements. So Nigeria adopts what we call policy of neutrality. That is, Nigeria decided that we're not going to belong to either the West or the Eastern Bloc. But in, the, in reality of the foreign policy of Tafa Balewa, the, policy, as in the foreign policy was pro-West or pro-British government. You know, at times you cannot quickly detach a child from the mother. Britain just left Nigeria many months. So, when we order that, the, 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 the closeness will still be there between Nigeria and Britain. Hence, the closeness between Nigeria and uh, Britain. And Britain belongs to the Western Bloc, governed by capitalists. Yet, Nigeria still claimed to be what? To be a no aligned member. But the policy was in favor of what? Of Britain, who is a, who happened to be a member of the no, a member of the Western Bloc. Meaning that the neutrality actually claimed was not actualized or fulfilled in that perspective. Take note of that. Then it was also in the 1960s that Africa, the centerpiece of Nigerian foreign policy, was adopted as one of the principles of Nigeria foreign policy. You can see it in this uh, second uh, this thing here. It was Tafaba Lewa that laid the foundation of Africa at the centerpiece of Nigeria foreign policy. According to him, Nigeria belonged to Africa. And whatever affects Africa affects Nigeria. Therefore, in our international relation, Africa must take a false uh, priority. So the adoptions of Nigeria as centerpiece, uh, Africa as centerpiece of Nigeria foreign policy was adopted in 1960 by Tafa We still govern our foreign policy T8. Okay, another foreign policy uh, objective 
which was actualized by this uh, government was the fact that the government supported the expulsion of uh, South Africa from the Commonwealth of Nations in 1961. This is an objective question. Take notes. Take notes. It's an objective question, you tell me. Prudent. Any problem? Okay. If you are the type that I've gone through the past question before you have come across this, hmm? let me ask you, when was South Africa suspended from the Commonwealth of Nations, 1961? And they may also ask you, why was South Africa suspended for the Commonwealth of Nations in 1961? It was due to the apartheid rule in South Africa. Okay, and another achievement of this foreign policy, of the foreign policy of uh, Tafa Balewa was the fact that it also, the government supported the formation of a uh, Organization of African Unity established in May 1963. You'll be taught in SS3 under international organization. Okay, then another rule, because this is another question, the one in black here, the one in black is another question. They will ask, they will ask you, why Nigeria broke diplomatic relations with uh, France? Hmm? Why Nigeria broke uh, diplomatic relations with uh, France? Nigeria broke diplomatic relations with France in 1961 because France tested the uh, atomic bomb in the Sahara Desert. Please take note, this is an objective question. These are the major focal point of the foreign policy under Tapawa Balewa, 1960 to 1963, and to 1966, I mean. Let me know if there's anybody that, that wants to ask questions in this arena. I have, just, I have just notified you the key area. If you know that um, what I'm saying now, pick your UTM pass question and go through Either two to three years if you don't see a question in this arena. If you have a question, if you don't understand what is happening here, this question, question in this arena is not, it's not in theory. It's an objective. If you don't know, you don't know. If you know, you know. That is why I have carefully pinpoint the major point for your better understanding. Any question? Okay. In absence of a question, I forge ahead. Here we have the Nigeria foreign policy, 1966 to 1975, under General Yakubu Gowon. There's something you must know about the foreign policy in this period. This was the era Nigeria witnessed civil war, popularly called the Biafra War. The person you're looking at is General Yakubu Gowon. That was the period Nigeria experienced a civil war. Of course, um, that is another topic in another arena. Okay. The foreign policy under General Yakubu Gowon, as I've said, covered the period of the civil war, and it was indeed a period of challenge for the country. Then you will now see a change here. There was a kind of change in the diplomatic relation of Nigeria with other countries. How does it, how did it happen? During the Civil War, Britain, that colonized Nigeria, of which I just told you now that the foreign policy of Etafa Balewa was pro-British government and pro-West. They abandoned Nigeria during the Civil War. The weapon Nigeria in needed to prosecute the world, of which Britain was supposed to support, Britain did not support. So, meanwhile, Nigeria foreign policy before this time does not have, did not have anything to do with the uh, Eastern Bloc. So, go on, have to turn to the Soviet Union. Russia, this time around, being the head of the Soviet uh, Union. It was the Soviet Union and the USSR, Russia in, now, that supported Nigeria, provided the federal military 
a government necessary arms to prosecute the war. When Britain now noticed that federal military government is now winning the war, engaged the Biafran government, and that USSR be a, be, be, be a an instant block, having money placed on Nigeria, it was the Nigeria little shoe and Britain little shoe so, so a kind of consign for Nigeria during the war, towards the end of the war. But at the beginning, Britain abandoned Nigeria. And the essence is that they were looking at it that if they, if, if, if they support Nigeria, and at the end of the day, the Biafra succeed. Don't forget, Biafra is the area we have the oil, the crude oil. So they want to stay neutral that anybody that win will go before that person, will go for that person. And moreover, the Biafra has resources that they want to tap from to let's observe first. And as a result of that observation that made them to neglect Nigeria, Nigeria, Nigeria turned to the Soviet Union. So Nigeria foreign policy under go one was not just pro West. Eh? It's, it's, it debates. In fact, there's nothing like neutrality here now because under neutrality, Nigeria is supposed to, Nigeria is supposed to seek assistance from a Soviet Union you know, because that's another, another block. Nigeria needs to get uh, support from that angle in order to prosecute the war. So the, the neutrality of Nigeria was not totally maintained, and the pro-West policy of the foreign policy was abandoned to the what? To the Eastern uh, Bloc, where the su necessary support was gathered. As a matter of fact, France and East and, and Western Bloc, France belong to Western Bloc. France supported the Biafra against Nigeria. So you see. The, this you see the imbalance here. Britain in Britain in Europe there. So France supporting Biafra, yet no support Nigeria until this the USSR came in so came to support us. So they may also ask you a question in this arena that under what regime, take notes, under what regime Nigeria foreign policy witness a pro-Eastern bloc? It is under Yakubu Guwon. And why? It was because of the need to prosecute the war. Okay? Then, as a matter of fact, the government also upheld the principle of uh, OAU and facilitated the formation of the ECOWAS in 1975. You'll be taught ECOWAS in SS3. The government of uh, Gowon, in fact, it was Gowon and Gina Sibir Yandene of Togo that led the formation of uh, ECOWAS, Economic Committee of West African States, as a result of the Lagos Treaty of 1975, May 26, 1975. And that's why we have the administrative headquarters of ECOWAS today in Nigeria. So the government believed in regional development, hence the formation of ECOWAS. Let me know if you have questions as regards the foreign policy under Guan regime. I've just pitched out the key points you must take notes where you can come across uh, the objective question. Once you know this, if you see the objective question, you're able to trash them out. You should know now the reason Nigeria decided to focus attention on the Western, Eastern Bloc during the Gowon era. I forget Nigeria Civil was 1967 to 1970. If you have a question, feel free to ask me. You can see, after the war, something happened. There was this period of oil boom. Let me ask you, on which, under which regime do we express oil boom? It was under Go One. Hmm? There was this period of oil boom. That is, oil rain and the money from oil then makes sense. And after the war, there's need for Nigeria to, as in, reconcile the different parts, the Biafra and the federal government. So Go One carry out the what we call the three R's of his government. The three R. Take note of the three R's. The three R's of government has to do with the 
reconstruction, reconciliation, and rehabilitation. They may ask you in an objective question, the three hours of the government of Gowon, or they may ask which government is associated with uh, the three hours, hmm? reconstruction, reconciliation, and rehabilitation program. It was a uh, one uh, government. Please take notes. Take note of that. This may be where I'm going to stop today so that I'm able to address the other issue. But I'm going to send a note to you later and I want you to study the notes entirely. Because I'm going to set questions from those areas. You don't know where I'm going to set my question. Foreign policy, 1975 to 1979. You, you can see I have two personalities here. You know, but one person is uh, General Mutala Mohamed, and the second person is General Oluse Gomba Sonjo. Oluse Gomba Sonjo was the second in command to Mutala Mohamed. Mutala Mohamed, through a coup, stage July 29, July 29, 1975 took over power from Gowon as the military head of state in Nigeria. But after 200 days in office, Mutala was assassinated February 13, 1976, by a coup led by Bukasuka Dinka. And after the coup, because the coup failed, it says that Olusegun Gombasunjo was not disposed, he took over the government. So Olusegun Gombasunjo continued with the foreign policy objective of a uh, General Motala Ramat Mohammed. And please, because this is another area you come across question. It was under this regime that Nigeria had a kind of a proactive foreign policy. This era witnessed what, what I call proactive or dynamic foreign policy. How? You will see the how now. How these individuals, although when you get to higher institution, you will get to know more about this perspective. Why Mutala was key, it has been suspected that because of the antagonist position Mutala had against the foreign power, that was why he was assassinated. Before this time, I think I told you something then that we have imperialism. We have colonialism and we have, we have new colonialism. Britain left Nigeria. Hmm? But the fact that Britain left Nigeria, Britain still controlled Nigeria economy indirectly through some multinational companies. I will get to that. This government believed in total liberation of Africa. Hence, the support given to liberation movements in Africa to ensure the emancipation of countries under colonial rule. Take notes that under this regime, Nigeria supported the government, as in the movement, all liberation movement led by Agustin Honeto. The movement acronym is MPLA, but the full meaning is Popular Movement for the liberation of uh, Angola. So Nigeria gave support to this group against the group led by another person which was supported by United States of America. And that is UNITAD. That is National Union of Total Independent of uh, Angola. Why Nigeria failed to support UNITAD and supported the uh, MPLA is the fact that UNITAD has a colonial tendency that if UNITAD should gain the secure independence, Angola will still be under colonial rule indirectly. Hence, the support given to MPLA under Agustin Honeto that led to the independence of Angola in 1975. 
quickly take this down. They will ask you, they may ask you a question. So you tell me a question. Which country had issue with Nigeria over the, the support granted to MPLA? Hmm? It is USA. They may shoot, shoot the question on that arena, but just take note that USA had issue with Nigeria because of the support Nigeria granted to MPLA in case UNITAD, which USA supported. Take note. Go through your past question. You see question in this uh, area. Okay. Then, aside this, Nigeria supported liberation movement in South Africa. Don't forget during this period, South Africa was going through apartheid rule. One of the supported, one of the support granted to the boys kicking against a foreign, uh, as an apartheid rule in South Africa was the fact that in 1977, a conference was held in Lagos titled Conference for Action Against Apartheid in South Africa. It was held in Lagos in 1975. That is why at times when you see South Africans, are you with me, prudent? When you see South African trying to carry out a xenophobic attack against Africa or Nigeria, I believe that they have lost their memory of their history. South Africa will borrow it that we supported, that the one treating us like nothing now even ghana you see what happened if you listen to news yes some days ago that the Nigerian embassy in ghana was destroyed i see there was no police there was no security at the embassy and the government not telling us stupid apology this is ghana that we also want supply power people that we support who in our subsequent class to understand how the ghanaians during the shagari era in fact, we're in Nigeria doing the many job. But today, <laughs> Ghanaians are making that are trying to be to, 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 to be our boss. Nigerians now are trying to run to Ghana. Ghana, Ghana that we're running to Nigeria. I think we must learn. Kudo to the Ghanaians for revamping their economy, for look for looking at their source of their problem and solve their problem. Today, now Ghana will not come to Nigeria, but Nigeria will run into Ghana. But in the in 1970s, 1980s, Ghanaians, Nigeria happened to be their hope. You get to know that under the Shagari era and Buhari era in 1979 to 1983 and 1984 to 1985. Okay? Nigeria supported, don't forget that we I said. Tafa Balewa adopted Africa the centerpiece of Nigeria foreign policy. We still govern Nigeria foreign policy today. As a result of this, all problems there with Africa were seen to be problem of Nigeria. So for Nigeria provided every opportunity. And these opportunities were more provided under the regime of uh, uh, Motala Basanjo government, as you can see with what I have shown in this uh, place. Then I was saying something about the role this government play by suppressing the level of imperialism in Nigeria. As a matter of fact, Britain left, but British petroleum was left in Nigeria. Barclay Banks was left in Nigeria. Barclay Banks is the bank in the United Kingdom. All these banks, they repatriate their profits down to their country. All these uh, multinational companies, I mean, corporation, I mean. The, the, the profit they are supposed to be used in Nigeria were taken to their country. But in 1979, this government nationalized these uh, multinational companies. The British petroleum was changed to African petroleum. When you see AP today, eh? whenever you see AP, it was formerly British petroleum. And the Barclay Bank changed to Union Bank. So you see Union Bank today, you know where Union Bank comes from. Okay, Barclay Bank came to Union Bank. So this, the, nat the nationalization of these foreign uh, corporations does not go down well with the foreign power that we're trying to imperialize our economy. 
That is why I said the major foreign policy trust was achieved under this uh, regime. The regime was so proactive, was so dynamic, was, was not, it, the regime was not myopic. Action is just action. When it's time to do something, the government does not look back. I think you have seen some major points here. Take notes. Take notes. I may ask you on that which government was the British Petroleum or the Barclay Bank were nationalized. It was during Oluse Gomba Sanjo and um, during uh, Motala Basanjo regime. Okay, and if they put a Basanjo, pick it. Because by this time, um, uh, Motala was already dead. Okay, so but it's during Motala Basanjo. Because Motala sets the foreign policy objective. Obasanjo implemented everything even after his uh, death. Take note of the key points. Oh, well, by God's grace, we will continue with other administration. There are, many, there are still many ahead of us. We will continue with other administration by God's grace when we have the privilege to meet next time. We will be looking at the Shagari. This is Shagari. Yes, I'm take, I will take your question. This is Shagari. This is uh, Buhari. Today, they are born. I'm Buhari. This is, uh, what is it called? The, our Maradona, Babangida, hmm? Babangida era. And uh, this will continue. So we'll look at all these things very well in our subsequent uh, class. Okay. Yeah, let me take your question now. So under whose regime do we have um, a foreign policy in South Africa? A foreign policy of Nigerian government, all Nigerian foreign government supported liberation movement in South Africa. Okay. Uh, the question they may ask you on that affair is that when was South Africa suspended for the Commonwealth of Nations? 1961. Nigeria supported that on that affair Okay. Then if you look at Oluse Gomba Sonjo and, and uh, Motala regime. They also supported the liberation movement in South Africa. You can see they had a, a conference was held in Lagos. Look at the middle uh, box. Conference for Action Against Apartheid was held in Lagos in August 1977. So the government also supported liberation. In fact, virtually all the government on the South Africa was liberated as of the election of. Uh, uh, Mandela and the swearing in 1994 as the president, all Nigerian government supported liberation. Just that some were like a I will tell you when we get to that. Like of Shagari government, like of Wari government in 1984 85, were extremely natural attitude towards uh, African uh, issues to some reasonable extent. We'll get to that. But this government supported the move. Even you see how Babangida also supported the move. I'll answer your question. Yes, sir. And you know the regime now where MPLA was supported and how it led to the liberation of Angola, right? And you know why Nigeria had issue with USA? Yes, sir. MPLA supports. <laughs> because the support granted to MPLA in this uh, unit tax. Okay. So, uh, Jessica, your question. So I don't have any questions. You mean you understand everything, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Well. Who is say again? Uh, I can say more in your question. I don't have any questions. You understand what I have taught mm -hmm. you now? Yes, you know sir. you are writing your CVT next week. I'm going to assess yes, it critically. In fact, all questions in this arena, they are usually use semi question. And I'm going to grab them very well. Uh, you are laughing, Jessica. That is the truth. I will tell you the truth. So, and the note I'm going to pour to you now. Make sure you study the note very well. Eh? Uh -huh. The notes, 
mute yourself for uh, Akin Simoni. The notes will co cover every question. It's an extension of the what I have sent to you. Just I start to copy it out based on what I so that for your better understanding. I know I also send a book to you, an ebook. I will send it to you. Make sure you study the ebook. Now let me let me answer this. Uh, I'm coming. I want to. We said you couldn't. You couldn't. Uh... Okay. You couldn't okay. open the this thing. Okay. Let me go. Let me let me go to that now. 